This episode of Double Tap is brought to you by Blue Alpha, Night Vision, Metador Arms, and Bowers Group. Welcome to Double Tap, episode 357. Your host tonight are Jeremy Paz, Derek from Rivers Edge Tactical in Valley City, Ohio. We got the Machine Gun Moses, Aaron Krieger with us. John Patton from the Gun Collective are here. My name is Sean Heron, and I'd like to welcome you all to this episode of Double Tap. It's going to be a fun one because they're all fucking fun. That's why. Don't ask questions. You know it's true. I know it's true. I, hey, I know Sean, it's true. Yeah. It's totally when true. Fuck did you get Nickelback to do your theme song? Well, it's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to answer it. <laughs> I got internet Nickelback. It's better. <laughs> exactly. I was like, hey, can you? I was like, hey, AI, can you please make a song that sounds like it was sung by five gay dudes? about our show called double tap and that's what it came back with it's what's old that, what's that band everybody likes that's horrendous all uh, the veterans love that band i can't think of it <laughs> five finger death punch yeah ffdp yeah uh, <laughs> 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 that's horrible when you said all the veterans like it i was like got it yeah nailed it <laughs> nailed it unnecessarily worshipped by veterans that's the band you should have chosen well i i can't get that that dialed in I basically have to do a description because the second I mention an actual band to the the music AI, it uh, it it fails. So uh, I, have, I have to be like, uh, so like roundabout describe it. <laughs> yeah, I was like pop metal that only tards like. <laughs> <laughs> but dude, it's so good. Yeah, it was it was great. <laughs> yeah, just wait till WLS this week. It's even better. Oh. Oh yeah, yeah that, that's a that's a high bar, dude. I know, I know, because that one's done by. I don't. We'll wait for that. I like how you also <laughs> said the conversation you had was, "Hey AI." <laughs> <laughs> well, it's kind of like Siri now. Okay, I also had it write a Taylor Swift song about uh, bears <laughs> and, and in the woods. Yes, and it turned out pretty much exactly like you would. You would assume here i'll throw it up here and i'm sad second. about bears <laughs> and the cool thing is i don't think it'll get us a takedown notice because it's not real yeah all right let's see uh here is taylor swift about bears can you guys hear it nope yes this is accurate there walk towards me I couldn't believe with his big brown eyes and his fluffy fur. I knew in an instant he was the one. I, why are we listening to this? <laughs> this is fucking fantastic. Uh, it's the best thing in the universe. I'm gonna, anyway, I'm going to zip tie the trigger and kickstart the charging handle on this phone. <laughs> <point. laughs> yeah, that, that, that is pretty bad. I also had to write a ska song about farts and bears. Uh, maybe I'll maybe I'll play that later. We'll oh, see. Oh yeah, you know what? Do that. <laughs> Wait a minute. Aren't aren't most guys songs about farts and bears? I think so. I'm not a hundred percent sure. Uh, Krista in the chat asked us a uh, why no mumbo rap theme song. Oh well. Oh, I got it covered. <laughs> I'm, glad, yeah, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> Hold on one second. <laughs> oh no, I don't have it on this computer. Boo. Yeah, we've been asked to make it stop with money. Hey, we literally got paid to make it stop. <laughs> okay. Not enough money. That's 50 the bucks. <laughs> 50 bucks. Then Two it'll dollars stop. does five Until minutes. Then dance. <laughs> it's the opposite of a jukebox. For $2, we'll not play this shit for five minutes. <laughs> exactly. Every five minutes, I'm playing ska music about farts. God, Which, no. It's actually a really good song. I'm like sad that I made it about farts. <laughs> <laughs> all right well uh jesus christ dude yeah AI, AI is pretty awesome. i agree <laughs> are we okay let's uh let's let's talk about let's talk about blue alpha look look at my titties i got the shirt on oh uh, he's wearing that blue alpha right now i'm wearing a blue alpha belt right now i got a blue alpha wallet in my 
in my uh, back pocket <coughs> and uh, someone in our discord. And if you would like to join our discord, it's we like shooting.com slash discord. It'll take you right there and you can join up. But someone was asking about a Glock 48 in the blue alpha fanny pack. And uh, I just happened to have my black runner concealment holster and my Glock 48 done by charger arms sitting on my desk. So I was able to take some pictures and demonstrate even with a flashlight, even with a big holster uh, that, that I had it in, it fit in the fanny pack just fine. Now, if you have an optic or a red dot on that, I don't, I'm not hundred percent sure mine is not an MOS, so it doesn't have a red dot. Uh, but either way, the fanny pack is a great way to carry uh, 90% of the time when I'm out of the house or the office, I have it slung around me. So it's, it's carried right here between my breastus, breastuses, and it's just a great way to carry. I think they're about $60. And if you use coupon code WLS 24, you too can carry with your fanny pack. One other thing is someone was talking today about when they appendix carry, they put the seatbelt behind uh, the gun in the holster, which is what I also do when I appendix carry. But fanny pack, I always put it directly to the right of me uh, in between my seat. And then it sits there holstered in the fanny pack, zipper undone, ready, uh, ready for whatever might come my way. But yeah, blue alpha fanny packs are awesome. Coupon code WLS24. Oh yeah, Nick's dead. Sorry. Forgot to mention that. Bye, loser. This is Dear WLS, by the way. Mm. This is Dear WLS, where we don't knit, don't miss Nick at all. Uh, people can send in their questions. We like shooting.com slash dashboard dashboard. And uh Aaron, why don't you take the first one? First one's from Brandit G. Brandit. Well, I mean it's a weird name. Brand Brandit. Brand. Brand. It's a it's clearly a, a like Midwest white dude name. Definitely. He uh, he definitely wants a pop. I, I, I tell you straight up, I've never met a Brant before. Yeah, you don't live in the Midwest. Yeah, I was like, you're I live in Michigan. We, That's we, not the Midwest, dickhead. Oh my god. It it's is like, you're, you're the Midwest hat. Get the fuck out of here. Still still Midwest. You're barely you're, the US. Our gang sign is this. Actually, <laughs> I'm the only one in the Midwest. Pennsylvania is the Northeast. Yeah, see. All right, well, Brandt. and I'm and I'm barely. I'm like the beginning of the Midwest, right? I'm not like, oh yeah, how you don't you know? Like those fuckers over there. I actually speak English. Oh, this is my boy Brant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, well, Brant. This is Brant Brantley and Brinley <laughs> and Branty. <laughs> I know not. Are we done? For shut no, the fuck no. up, you guys. Just shut up. <laughs> I know not all of you are long range shooters. Or all I know not all of you are into long range shooting, but I would like to know what your longest shot to date is and what cal caliber slash optic you used. Mine is 2,645 yards on a 24 inch steel plate with a 338 Lapua Magnum and an eight and a eight by 32 Cit Citron scope. Hmm, interesting. Sounds like so, this guy just wanted to fucking call and brag, is what it sounds yeah, like. To me. Like, he doesn't like even give a shit, Mark. He doesn't give a shit about anything we did. He's just like, guess what I did. <laughs> which is fucking dope that that's super that's cool so my shot yeah my furthest shot ever is like 1760 so one mile but i don't count that because it wasn't my gun it wasn't my setup it wasn't anything of mine i literally picked up the gun and ryan kleckner walked me in it was a barrett mrad and 300 prc and that got me hungry to, to have my own one mile rifle so i have a bergara 300 prc uh that i'm going to try to take to a mile but my for the shot on my equipment that I set up is one five one thousand five hundred eighty three yards. Uh, this was in Idaho at a Fred Masterson Force Options Long Range class, and I did it with a Swamp Fox Optics Warhawk on my Boring Rifle Six Five Creedmoor, and uh, it was it was freaking awesome. John, how about you? Uh, I've shot a mile a few times. Uh, the first time I ever did it was with an M82A1 in West Virginia. That was fun. That was at like the first ever YouTube event that I went to. That's cool. Uh, but more recently, I shot uh, the Daniel Defense 6.5 Creedmoor out to a mile. Or no, it was a 6 Creedmoor, sorry. It was a okay. 6 Creedmoor, the whatever the fuck they call it. The Delta 5 or whatever. Yeah, that. That thing? 
Yeah, that that thing, that thing where you put this the stuff and you shoot it. Yeah, that I luckily uh, recently got access to a range that has uh, targets out to a mile. Dang. But more more recently, like we've been we've been shooting. It's the same place I showed you the night vision from. Oh, okay, that's you can cool. See at night out to like thirteen thirty. That's cool, yeah, man. It's fucking awesome. Yeah, love that, Jeremy. Uh, I don't, not sure exactly what you're doing. Oh, you're eating. No, you're putting in dip in. I thought okay. it was the self fellatio over there. <laughs> oh God. Uh, what's for the old removed rib? Uh, yep. the, the furthest shot I've ever taken, uh, at least that I know I made contact with was 2,500 yards. And Damn. that was, and that was with a Mark 19. That's fucking cool. But I don't think that counts in this context. So. I mean, it, yes, it no. It I wanted, does. And that was with iron sights, so I kind of want to hunt. But there were also multiple rounds going in that direction, and it was on a tripod with a T and E machine. So you're just kind of like, dee, 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 you know, you got you got. It was still fun as fuck. Um, but the longest uh, actual rifle rifle shot that I uh, I know I've made contact with. Like the farthest shot I've ever made is probably several miles. I just don't know if I hit anything. Um, <laughs> what? Well, yeah, same. Because <laughs> that's what he asked. What's the farthest shot? Well, probably I don't know. Uh, Three hundred Wimags probably going to go for like what six <laughs> or seven miles if you just kind of crack it up in the air. What's um, the, I I, I should have known. What's the longest shot that you've made with a gun that you own or a gun that a close friend owns that was on purpose aimed at a target and not an not an ND? uh 20 uh or sorry uh 1200 yards with my rock trucker and that's got okay, eight, to, eight, 8 to 32 power uh 8 to 32 power old burris scope on it and my target was a rock okay a rock is a good target excellent yeah. i hit the, i hit the rock though <laughs> yeah they, <laughs> they, like seriously they like it's it's not safe you know, because you can you can send that round spiraling off into nothingness, but like they do pop pretty good. Yeah, rocks are uh, sweet. Honorable mention: I shot uh, Sean's PRC three hundred PRC at my YouTube play button at a thousand. Yep, that's worth hit it. it three four times. Uh, something like that. It's upstairs. Yeah. Hell yeah! So awesome. Yeah, it's fucking dope. All right, cool. Yeah. Can I can I answer you fucking ass? Ah. 50 yards. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were eating. Ah, oh, no. I put it on mute. I wasn't eating. <laughs> okay. What, uh, what's your turn? A uh, thousand yards with a uh, 308 and a uh, goddamn some shitty ass Nikon scope. Mm. Where'd yeah. you do that? Up in Harbor Springs. We got a range that goes out to a thousand. That's super cool. So 308 at a thousand. It's like lobbing mortars, right? Yeah, it wasn't. I mean, it, it rang the gong, but it wasn't like. Yeah. yeah. Dude, I dude, I did not realize I needed so much relief to don the scope. Yeah, one hundred percent. Once you get over eight hundred with three hundred eight, you're kind of just like it's it is like artillery. Yeah, shooting it up at a nice angle. That's awesome, man. You need to come out here and shoot some uh, thousand yard stuff too. Yes, with some real calibers. Uh, th dude, three hundred eight is awesome. I love three eight, three hundred eight. But once you once you start trying to hit a thousand at three hundred eight, it's it's challenging. Oh, for sure, for sure. Uh, John, why don't you take the next one? Okay. Joshua says, recently got my first suppressor after a 10-day approval time. Holy shit, right? It's a 30 cal can with a chemo hub on occasion after some hard use and things begin to get dirty. As I'm trying to take the can off, the can itself will unscrew from the hub. What's the best way to prevent this? Is it okay to use Loctite or rock set on the hub as the can can be disassembled from the front? Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, dude, this shit happens all the time when you start using cans frequently. <laughs> yeah. Like I have pulled off more muzzle device or, or like broken them loose and then have to like crank it the fucking. I, I don't know if there's a way to fix it. I don't really give a shit. Just crank it down hard and then just crack it back. Uh, yeah. rock, rock set. The answer is that, rock set. Isn't that the way? rock set your hub adapter into the back of your can um you can get it out of it's it. never coming out no you could soak it in water and it comes right off uh-huh if you I, can get water into the threads but you, you literally drop it in a bucket and leave it there for overnight it will seep its way in there it will seep seep seepage 
Interesting. Yeah. This is one of the things that I hate about the chemo. Like I, I spent like twelve, fifteen hundred dollars of my own money to replace all my stupid silencer go bullshit with chemo, and then the same shit happened. I'm it, like, <laughs> I'm just so over these QD systems on suppressors. Dude, direct thread cans are great. Yeah, they direct are. Thread. So I, direct thread is great, but then you got to fucking be like neurotic about making sure that your can hasn't spun loose a little bit because uh, I like seven or eight cans that I have have in cap strikes because they fucking came like a quarter turn in fact um what's that youtube channel uh god I, I can't even remember but he just did a video on loosening your can a quarter inch and it like did at 100 yards it was like a six inch difference in 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 your group oh which yeah is really it, not- that shit can really especially if the threat like if the threads are not done well and there's yeah. loose tolerances between the threads on the muzzle device, whether that's a direct thread or not, that, that small amount of play can really play havoc on, uh, your accuracy and consistency. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know why you're having such a problem. Like if you're, if your hub adapter is coming off your can rock set it, that's, that doesn't need to come off anyways, like ever. Unless you have one hub for multiple cans. What, what do you that mean? would be weird. What do you mean? Let's be fair. That'd be weird. Because he's <sighs> talking about the hub adapter that goes. It's part of the can. It's probably serialized. Is it? No, no. I don't think so. The yeah, adapter? The- yeah, that's where. I, in my mind, that's where the uh, the the like actual muzzle brake adapter threads into. Yeah, right? where, the part that goes over the muzzle device and locks on is your like chemo adapter that screws into the back of your suppressor. Yeah, so the hub oh, adapter yeah, is yeah, yeah, threaded, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. and then it basically threads into the blast chamber on the can. I don't know. Rock yeah. set it. Be done. Yeah, it. Just rock set it. Yeah, is if it's if that's the only can that you're using the hub adapter on, because the hub adapter is like 250, 270, 270 bucks. If, Pretty, if I may. And the, yeah. the reason you don't use Loctite is because you'll you'll roast it and it won't stick. Go ahead. Right. Right. I, I would say I would suggest uh rock set. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Aaron. Yeah, like, yeah, I'm here for you guys. Like I have, I have this muzzle device rock set on. Nice flash hider. Yeah, and it's a Griffin uh, uh, dual lock suppressor mount. I thought Very it was cool. going to make a Harry Potter reference. <laughs> it's a Griffin door. Griffin door. All right, awesome, Jeremy. Why don't you take the next one? Um. Uh, <laughs> Lewis, hey, if I do a Form 4 as an individual for a silencer and my wife uses it when I'm away, say, during a home evasion, could she get in trouble? Theoretically, yes, but I'd like to see them try. Yeah, I mean, yes, absolutely, 100%. Uh, the Only the registered owner of a silencer can legally possess and use it, period. She shouldn't even have access to it. Like, if she knows the combo to the safe, that's a violation. If she has a key to the safe, that's a violation. You're going to have to kill her, dude. I, I think you probably, I mean, I'm not recommending that you do that. I'm just saying. I'd like to see them try to prosecute that shit. I mean, yeah. I mean, there's solid legal ground, obviously, because it's the law. So, yeah, I mean, they probably. could. I, I'm, I've seen prosecutors do weirder things, go after people for lesser reasons. So, yeah. you know. Agreed. If you're on the East Coast, don't even try it. I mean, here's the thing, right? It, it would be, uh, it'll be an add-on. No one's going to be prosecuted for that specifically. It'll be an add-on to something else that they don't like. Not only that, but using that in that context. And then like, if you get sued civilly, which could happen, then you have the potential for that nonsense to be brought up that it, oh, it was an illegal silencer. Right. Like you don't want to add that to the mix. 100%. Um, Um, But then again, the question is like during a home invasion. Well, I would, what's the saying? I'd rather be judged by six than carried by 12 or whatever. (laughs) Yeah. When you're, are you, dude? (laughs) I want want to get into politics so I can kiss hands and shake babies. Right. (laughs) If, If it was touching them, we know you'd be Biden. (laughs) Um, all right. Alex W says, Hey y'all two part question. Number one, 
I remember a while back, Jeremy was talking about wanting a gun quiet enough to deal with a home intruder without waking up his kids. I was wondering if he ever accomplished that. Two, I would like to have a gun quiet enough to take a raccoon or a pedophile off of a dumpster without my neighbors knowing what happened. I'd like it to be semi-auto as well. The guns I currently have that I'd like to use would either be my 16-inch 16, 16 556 AR, a 10-millimeter Glock, or a 9-millimeter P365X macro. Do you think I could get any of those that quiet? If so, what suppressors, other mods would you recommend? If none of these guns would do the job, what would you suggest? I'd rather not get into a caliber I'm not already shooting, but I'd be willing to consider adding 300 black or 45 ACP to the menu. So <laughs> I have a uh, nine millimeter uh, roller delay blowback with a Bowers Group Verse 9S. And if I shoot 165 grain bullets out of it, uh, yeah, I could probably smoke somebody in the next room and not wake my kids up. Um, I could probably smoke somebody in the next room and not even bother people that are awake and listening. Um, that being said, your 556 AR is never going to be quiet enough because there's no point in getting a subsonic 556. Um, same with 10 mil. And I mean, I guess with a nine mil, if you like put your thumb on the slide and held it closed and had a big fucking suppressor on there and only plan on shooting one goddamn round. Yeah. Um, I was thinking like the 45 ACP with a big old suppressor and you hold the slide closed. Yeah. That's kind of it. Um, your best bet would be get like a Ruger 1022 with the Volkwarzen lightweight titanium bolt that will cycle the uh, 22 quiet rounds. Yeah. And then you get those, uh, those Aguila. Um, it's basically a 22 short case with a huge, like 60 grain bullet on it. Um, so if anybody doesn't know, and I know I've talked about this before, but a 22 long rifle is what's called a healed bullet. The, 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 unlike most other rounds, the brass of a 22 long rifle is the same diameter as the bullet itself. And if you don't believe me, go look at one. The bullet itself is not pressed down into the case like a 22 Magnum. The case is actually crimped around the base of the bullet. Um, and that makes the, the, the bullet and the brass. That's why like 22 long, long, 22 short, long and long rifle all work out of like uh, the same uh, cylinder in like a revolver, but you can't fit a 22 Magnum in there, even though the bullets are all the same diameter. I see. Just because the case is wider there. Because the 22 Magnum is actually pressed down into the case. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, uh, but Volkortsen, I think it's Volkortsen, makes a lightweight bolt that cycles that subsonic shit in a 1022. And if you get like a really good 22 can, um, like an icon, and you just, I mean, it's like click, click, click. And the only way to really get quieter than that is to get a bolt action or a lever action with a, you know, something with a closed breach. Yeah. So when you fire it, it doesn't open up automatically. So like you a lever. Look at, uh, there are certain semi-automatics like the small Berettas and maybe some HKs that can be modified to lock the slide with the safety. Yeah. So you can fire it with the safety lever on and the slide will not move and you would have to then eject that round basically yeah you want a well rod yeah yeah i mean the the ability to get that even a 45 acp i've fired one indoors without ears they're not quiet right right exactly i was just gonna say i i have a ruger sr22 and uh i think it was it was like a range tool 22 suppressor and i shot it here in the office and oh my god it was so loud yeah it's it's very rare for guns to be Hollywood quiet and a lot of guys that will tell you, oh, this is Hollywood quiet. They're shooting it outside with, with ear protection. Ear pro. <laughs> yeah. Like there is no such thing as Hollywood. Even I mean, like I uh take care of varmints around the house with a bolt action 22 with CCI quiets. Here at sea level, that's good to freaking go. That's a good setup for yard waste. However, in a defensive scenario, you want a semi-automatic and you want to like you want rounds on target. So yeah. like giving up that to have the ultra quiet thing is silly. Yeah. And none of those choices that he gave us, like none of them are quiet. Even if you got one of those, even if you had like the perfect setup with the right ammo, the right suppressor, you had something that would lock your bolt closed so that you didn't have a bunch of sound coming out of there. It's still not going to be movie quiet. Like none of those. Yeah, none, none of the things we've talked about are going to be movie quiet. 
they may not sound like a gunshot. Like someone would be like, what the fuck was that? Did somebody drop a table or like knock over a chair or drop a book? Like, yeah, that, that, that is a good thing about shooting a gun in a house. The sound doesn't travel well. Right. There's been plenty of people that have like fired a gun off in one room in the house and somebody in like not even a very big house and somebody's been in the other end of the house and they're like, what the hell was that? Like, right. It just yeah, sounds like somebody knocked that. their chair over. Exactly. And that's confirmation bias as well. Like we, we will absolutely, or, uh, what's, what is the term that I'm looking for? Uh, normalcy bias. That's the one like we our, our brain will try to rationalize an unknown thing with things that we know. So like, it will be like, Oh, did somebody knock something over? Did somebody drop something? Did the dog knock a book off the, off the table or none of it's quiet. None of it's quiet. None of it's silent. I, I think I think quieter. The quietest yeah. I've ever heard was an integrally suppressed savage bolt action with those Aguila yeah. ultra quiet. They're like 700 feet per second. And we were outside. This was not inside. And my buddy shot just like a tree across the way. And it was like click whack. <laughs> That's awesome. Like, yeah, you, hear the, you hear the firing pin in a 22 bolt action of any variant. Uh, with subsonic ammo, they're going to be like really, really quiet, but do not try and use that in a defensive scenario. That's dumb. Yeah, yeah definitely yeah, it's, it's not optimal. It, it's like it, it won't go uh, through a jean jacket. Even. <laughs> Aaron, you hear that music? Yeah, Sean, you know what that means, don't you? I do. It means we're going to be talking about night vision. That's your da- your damn right that we're going to be talking about night vision. I was just uh, I was just looking at a gun that I got in that has some night sights, and I got to say, everyone's heard me say it, but like my whole opinion on night sights has changed over the years. Uh, like I get guns in now, and if they don't have night sights, I'm like immediately going and looking to see if it's something that I think I would carry. If it's just like a plinker or whatever, uh, that's fine. If it doesn't have night sights, but. Pat from Night Vision actually brought up a really good point to me the other, not too long ago. Because I was like, what's honestly, like, what what's the best reasons to have night sights? And he was like, honestly, the best reason is because we're all stupid and don't change our batteries and our red dots. And most of the time, our red dots are, the batteries are dead. <laughs> <laughs> They're not wrong. And it's so freaking true. So true. So, like, having a backup is is definitely a good thing. Being able to see your gun on your nightstand. Being able to see your sights if you're in dark and you have to engage, <laughs> excuse me, into into the light or dark or whatever it happens to be. Uh, these are these are all great reason reasons to have night sights. John, like, how many of the guns that you get in have night sights? Would would you say percentage wise? I would say fifty yeah, percent. That's about. That's probably what I would say. Would you say that that percentage has gone up over the last four years? No, I've said it's gone down. Interesting. I wonder why that is. Well, the, the difference is a lot of the guns that I've been messing with are not specifically carry guns. Like the ones that are meant for carry typically do have night sights. They're not great night sights all the time, which yeah. is a whole nother discussion. Um, but I would say like, uh, I don't think my staccato has it. I don't think the new bull armory that I'm messing with has it. It might, I, I'm, I might not be thinking of it, but like, I just... I would say that a lot of the fancy high end guns, they'll go to black, like all black tall sights. Yeah. Yeah. Instead of uh, maybe like a fiber optic front or something like that. But oftentimes there's not a rear and I find that kind of annoying. Yeah. I don't mind the, the black U rear sights, uh, just depending on what the gun is and what the, what the use is. But I think it's I think it's cost, and I think it's a perceived cost because night sights are actually not that expensive. Uh, you can usually get them right at about a hundred bucks, uh, and even like a hundred bucks installed, depending on if you have cool gun stores around you or not. And some some you can install yourself. Yeah. Oh yeah. Some you can, and then there's Smith and Wesson, and fucking like oh god, <laughs> I hate their sights. But yeah. Some of them are challenging. Some of them you can absolutely do. You know what? No, Sean. Hammer yeah. and a punch. Hammer and a punch. The, mm-hmm. the, wor- the worst sights are still better than waiting for a, a sight plate from uh, Daniel Defense. <laughs> <laughs> so true. So true. 
Um, now, Jeremy, you're not supposed to use hammer and a punch on night sights. I'm not sure if you know that. Uh, bullshit. I mean, uh, bullshit? I'm not saying you can't. I'm just saying. You're the manufacturer. Whoa. Whoa. Uh, you know how I know that? Because I broke yeah. one and it was a night <laughs> sight. And I called them and they said, did you use a sight pusher? And I said, mm-hmm. and he goes, yeah, we don't warranty ones with done with a sight pusher. Hammer and a punch. What? What? That's what not. What was this? Because that sounds like the opposite. That yeah. that is the opposite of what I've heard. I'm telling you what the manufacturer. Told I tell you what they were going to say. Whatever answer you gave them was going to be the they they don't warranty that. You know? <laughs> Sorry, that, yeah, that. I used a sight pusher. Yeah, we don't war- warranty that. I used a hammer and punch. Yeah, we don't warranty that. They said uh, <laughs> if you if you strike the base of the sight and not the side of it, okay. that is that is the proper way to install those sights. Dang. All right. Well, I doubt that the, I, I, I don't even know who that was, but you can get night sights at night vision, N I G H T F I S I O N coupon code W L S is life is the place that you can save money. And that's the code to do it with. Aaron, why don't you take the next question? The next question, Sean comes us to us from Dr. Scary guy. He says, hypothetical situation. If you won all the lotteries at once and suddenly had billions of dollars to start a gun rights advocacy group, what would you name the group? For example, I imagine Jeremy would start with something like, uh, I like little boys, never infringe on God-given rights. But Aaron's would be mispronounced. Aaron would mispronounce his acronym and would start his own group, Firearms Individual Rights Every Day, which is uh, fired. Okay, yeah. <laughs> We don't need to talk about what Jeremy's going to be. <laughs> I'm asking because I need to find a way to it. <laughs> I just got that, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> Niger. <laughs> I'm asking because I need to find a way to, to make a nonprofit and leverage it to get discounts on guns and ammo. I need ideas for names, gentlemen. Hold hmm. the fuck on. Hold <laughs> the fuck on. Your, your entire goal is to be a piece of shit. You are well, what we refer to as being a grifter. Fuck off. <laughs> we are what we ref- you are what we refer to as being a gun influencer. Hey, <laughs> I didn't start a nonprofit yet. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't want to start a nonprofit. Uh, there, I, I there are about it a bunch, but it's yeah. A there's lot lots of them out there. Regulations and shit. Nah. Yeah. I, I want to start a nonprofit for profit. <laughs> you know. Well, that's the thing. Like, I'm down at there, RA. <laughs> there's lot, lots of lots of nonprofits out there making millions of dollars. Oh yeah, like, there's well, not allowed to have profit at the end of it. Like, did you guys see Larosier? He wrote. He was. Uh, he finally let loose on Firearms Policy Coalition (FPC), and this was on X, uh, formerly Twitter, and basically FPC like 11 percent of their income goes towards fighting for gun rights. The rest of it is salaries and business expenses. And <laughs> so, yeah, I mean like, but are, if those business expenses are like lawyers fees, no, they are not 11% of what they bring in goes to that. Well, okay. The rest are like lobbying costs. No lobbying is, uh, I'm sorry. Lobbying is 3%. So 14% goes to fighting for gun rights and the rest of it goes towards the grift. I mean, honestly, that's not, uh, w- in this, uh, in our text messages, that's not abnormal for a nonprofit. They all generally run very, very overhead heavy, and then very little money goes to the cause. I would say that eleven percent is higher than most. Wasn't yeah, like wounded warriors guy? Wasn't he just buying himself nice cars and shit? With it was that like, money? It's like that's one, different. It's like one, it's like one percent. I think yeah, the I, I, I think like the, three, one to three percent is probably I, normal. I want to say the Red Cross was like one or two percent. Yeah, it's it's horrendous. Yeah. I think I think the problem is that people don't think that way about nonprofits. Yeah, but when you compare them to some other gun rights organizations, FPC is quite a bit lower because they don't actually have any legal fees. Because uh, according to Matt Larosier's uh, Twitter, they basically have a law firm or they don't have a law firm. There is a law firm that is funded completely by a philanthropist, an unknown uh, anonymous philanthropist billionaire, and they pay for all the stuff. FPC is basically just a, a fund, fund re, fundraising wing of this stuff. They don't pay the law, the law firm. They don't pay for the fights. They raise money. And they make a shitload of memes. 
Yeah, lots of memes. Yeah, lots of memes. I don't know. Well, you know, good, good memes. <laughs> they're they're okay memes. <laughs> I okay, so we still, we still haven't made up names for these companies, right? Is that the yeah? Part sorry, of the I, I got I got carried away there for a second. Uh, I would say gun owners. Uh, action, yay! So gun gun action, yay is uh, what Nas- I would say. National Institute. Nope. Of getting nope guys. Don't do it. Right. Don't do it. <laughs> gun gun act gun action, yay! <laughs> That's what I recommend. Don't don't listen to anything Jeremy says. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, John, do you have any any ideas for him? Guns, no, no. fuck you. Perfect. Okay. Guns are tools. Hold on, my printer just gave me a notification that says it needs maintenance. Uh oh, you got one of those. You've been I had to it. I got a high maintenance printers over there. <laughs> There's a new version of uh, Bamboo Lab Slicer. Huh. Interesting. I don't know what maintenance it needs. There's no. It's I think I just got hacked by made. FPC. Uh, I would probably call it firearms. I don't know. Something for fat. I got nothing. <laughs> uh, gun owners out killing. Gok. G O O K. Oh, God. <laughs> it's, it's guaranteed to be racist. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for that question. I hate it. Never send it again. <laughs> uh, John, go ahead. Right, Haw- Howard. Hawkeye Handloader said firearms and guns. <laughs> yeah, nice. <laughs> Hi, guys. I'm going on my first hunting trip this year, so I bought a sling for my bolt-action rifle that utilizes the swivel studs. And I was wondering if these types of slings just suck or if I'm retarded. The only purpose of the sling seems to be bracing for offhand shooting or draping it over the shoulder and hoping it doesn't slide off. Why don't bolt action guns have more modern side attachments that stop the gun from dangling upside down when the sling is over your neck? Is there some purpose or am I missing missing uh, or is this legacy fudge shit? It sounds like you have a sling that doesn't fit correctly. Like you haven't tightened it because it shouldn't be like if you're walking around with it and it's just flopping around, the sling isn't tight enough. But uh, like, my I'm confused is, as to what the problem is. Yeah. So he's like the only it only seems to be for bracing for offhand shooting or draping it over one shoulder. Yeah. Like, yeah what the fuck, that's the fucking purpose that's of a sling. Point. right? Yeah. Yeah. It's not made for crossbody carry like a tactical rifle. If you want to do like hands free shit. Put it across your body with the rifle on your back and muzzle, you know, and then the sling like from your left shoulder down to your right side. And then you can just walk around without having to touch it. Right. And if you're trying to do that, cinch it up yeah. so that it's tight and then you can like move around freely. But like it, I, I think that one of the issues is a lot of them do tend to fall off the shoulder. They don't like mm-hmm. if unless you're like holding it tight, they can they can slide. But yeah, what we would call it the nature of the beast, what we would call a parade sling uh, in the military was the one where the rifle is behind your shoulder and the sling goes over your shoulder and you hold the strap here. Right. Right. That that's what you're talking about. And yeah, if you don't like have inward push to that sling and you're moving around it like there's no letting it go. That's not going to happen. Yeah. And honestly, like I don't crossbody my rifle because i usually have a pack and a bino pack and like i've got stuff everywhere so i generally just literally carry it over my shoulder with inward pressure on this on the front of the sling in my chest now i do have something that nick talked about on the show like years ago that's like this thing that's supposed to like hold it on but i like i'll probably never use it again it's just complicated and yeah <laughs> what if you have a backpack get a fucking everly stock or something that's got the scabbard in it that's fair too i the the thing that comes to my mind is he asked if there's like modern attachments that would fix this and all i could think is if you're attaching the sling in the same but even if it's a qd cup I, I, that would not solve this 
unless it's yeah. on the side and side of the rifle and you're going to carry it like an AR. Well, you, know, you need a different sling at that point. If, you, if you're going to carry it like this, like, you, like you're, yeah. like you're well, in the military, you need a, like, that's not what these are made for. I think what you, what he needs is a better sling. So for my hunting rifle, I use flatline fiber coast slings. I li- I tighten it way. Let's see. My hunting is tightened way more. It's tightened almost all the way. And then I can literally loosen it as needed to fit around my bino pack or I can tighten it, but it uses uh, sling studs on my hunting rifle. And like, that's, that's just literally what I use. So I think that, uh, you don't have a connection issue. I think you have a sling issue. Right. Agreed. Yeah. You need a, you need a sling blade. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like your body. Like your Kaiser blade. <laughs> <laughs> Some folks call it a Kaiser blade. I call it a sling blade. Like, yeah, it's just your body's not built that way. So you have to use, even though it's there, you just don't have to hold the entire weight of the gun in your hands. Like you're still, you know, you still have to like loop a thumb in there and like hold it on your shoulder. So yeah, you're retarded. <laughs> no, I mean, that's how he started off the question. So like, <laughs> right, he gets it. Um, Jeremy, why don't you take the next one? Um, read it. Read it in accent. Senor, thick and juicy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Thanks, I hate it. Juicy boy here. What's y'all's opinion on Patriot Ordnance Factory rifles? And also looking for a good EDC. Or actually be Ed they say, preferably something compact and juicy. That you <laughs> you went from like Mexican to fucking Canadian real fast. <laughs> it's hard. And then, <laughs> and then back to Speedy Gonzalez. Yeah, but it's not like it's not like Spanish words where it could keep you in the accent. <laughs> so senor, I cannot do this. It was good. Uh, what do that. you guys think of POF? Uh I have a couple of them. Uh, some some are pretty good. Some, well, I should say this: the semi-autos that I've messed with, like the small frame 308, cool. I like it. The ARs have shot, cool. The lever gun, not great. Yeah, that's that's about where I fall on those. Jeremy, got any experience with POF? This is all very interesting when he's talking. He's <laughs> muted. Like, fucking I, learn how to use a mic, dude. I can never remember if I'm muted or not muted. And air on the it's side. It's not like caution. I can't fucking. It's not like I can see the switch. It's down here. <laughs> Angle the mic down like it's prom night. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> you got to angle it down towards you. I can't. It literally won't. Like you're trying to slap a plotty. <laughs> it, it doesn't do that. And it won't turn if I try. I'll break it. I mean, slot a floppy. I don't know what the fuck I just said. <laughs> I don't know what you said either, but it went. I just, just go I, with it. Yeah, I was like, oh, I, get, I understand what he's saying. Yeah, I get it. I, get I it. speak stroke. Okay, go ahead, <laughs> Uh Yeah, POF. I got nothing wrong. I got nothing against POFs. Actually, they I make mean, my they make my favorite adjustable gas block. There you go. Hmm. I've used them. I think that I think they're pricey, and I'm not a hundred percent sure why. They do make they are, a really good. They are they, piston guns. That's why. Uh, and they actually make a proper piston. Yeah, it's good. There you go. There you go. Uh, Anthony S- says, "I got a Sons of Liberty gun work stripped to lower receiver for this build I'm working on. Ended up going with the Geisel SSA X with the lightning bow." I was told by a friend that you should never use anti-rotate pens in a mil spec trigger. Also, I have another friend who worked in the industry, and he swears by using the KNS Gen JJ anti-rotate pens in any lower, no matter no matter the type of trigger. I'm leaning towards the KNS kit, but I want to know if there's any pros or cons with anti-rotate pin kits, and when you should or shouldn't use them. I've never even heard like you shouldn't use them. I've Me either. He like- says you should not. Oh, Geisley says. I see. That makes sense. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, fuck well, anti rotation families. Anti rotation is not anti walk. That's two different things. Like, oh, yeah. Okay. Anti rotation is the ones that have the little bar that go from the front to the back, and they can't even turn in there. I there see. Is the yeah. one with the end caps is just an anti walk pin. They okay. still spin in the hole. Yeah, I like anti walk pins. In yes. fact, I use them just because. Well, I actually use them in machine guns because one of my machine guns, the pins walked. Uh, but I don't use any anti-rotation pins, mostly just because I think they look like shit. 
Yeah, I have one gun with anti-rotation pins, and I just I got them because the pins were walking. I'm like, this will hold them in place. That's the only reason why I got them. <laughs> right. You know. So yeah. Yeah, the only gun I have with anti-rotation pins is my uh, Coyote rifle, and that's got a Timney cassette trigger in it, so like it doesn't matter. Yeah, you don't even need them. I don't know if this is still true, but guys, these used to come with. Uh, pins that had like slots where the springs were supposed to rest and that was supposed to prevent walking mm -hmm. and uh like, like all like all trigger pins yeah i was just gonna say like the the hammer spring rests on those legs so they don't walk right that that's not always the case mm -hmm. right so uh, i guess let's see what was the, what was the question uh should he get uh the anti-walk KS pins yes yeah and and honestly like just send it, dude. Just send it. Yeah, not the anti-rotate, though. Like, just get anti-walk. Yeah. They're cool. I mean, They're Sean's cool. pretty anti-walking, so. Yeah. Ha-ha. 100%. Ha-ha, <laughs> <laughs> fucking got him. Yeah. You talking to you, that piece of shit. Hey, hey, uh, hey, I got a question for you. Mm. When you go to the bar, uh, as what do you say? Was it, what, what do straight guys say to, to gay men at a bar? I don't know. Tell me. <laughs> See? <laughs> okay. I'll tell you what straight men say to gay men in the bar. Obviously, you wouldn't know because you're not straight. I don't go to gay bars, Aaron. I like said, you. what do straight men say to gay men in bars? I didn't say gay bars. I just said bars in general. Oh, you said, I don't know. Generally oh. speaking, keep, keep, keep moving or lose it. What are they going to lose? <laughs> what? Huh? They're, they're move it or lose it, sister. <laughs> move it or lose it. He's like, talk to, to the hand. <laughs> I guess you should have asked this to Jeremy because he's clearly experienced. <laughs> Can I stay? I'm an attractive man. <laughs> Put your dick away. I might bite it. <laughs> Jeremy, it's, it's, not gay, it's not gay if they die. <laughs> it's still gay. <laughs> that's very gay that's even worse and murder than gay. <laughs> yeah i think being a gay killer is like worse than just being gay dude yeah because like you you can't like well being like gay is definitely the... being gay is definitely worse than being a killer what what i don't think so <laughs> jeremy's over here dommering people <laughs> <laughs> it's okay Christ. eat the sandwich eat the fucking okay. sandwich hey we uh matador arms sean we give away prizes uh, oh. to, to people who send in questions. Go to we like shooting.com slash dashboard. Click on Dear WLS. Submit your questions. Uh, please <coughs> not not Senor Thick and Juicy ever again, though. <laughs> Everyone but him. Send your questions. Seems we like shooting.com slash dashboard. And uh, the winner this week is Ray Tard. So congrats, Ray T, uh, on all your success in life. Let me get some get applause going. Yeah. <laughs> Matador Arms. So uh, Nick was in town over the weekend. Uh, and from Matador Arms? No, or Nick from We Like Shooting. Who's that? I thought he was dead. Yeah, he was in town over the weekend. Why do you think he's dead? <laughs> I got ah. game killed him. Duh. What was he doing in town? Hanging out. Like, couldn't come to your fucking could come to your birthday, but you can just come to some random weekend. I see how it is. <laughs> or my wedding. Yeah. Fucking <laughs> I know you didn't say the one you didn't go to. <laughs> <laughs> I came to your birthday. That was a big deal. It was a big deal. It was a big deal. Anyway, he came and he wanted to shoot the the Mat 9. And he so we took MP5s and the Mat 9. And actually, so my Mat 9 now has the uh MP5 S. K is it SK handguard SD SD. I always fuck that up. That makes it look like the, like the older uh, MP fives. It's awesome. It's got the matador arms grip on it. And uh, we had a blast shooting it. It was, it was seriously just so much fun. Uh, mine has the new frontier armory MP five magazine lower. And it's just a blast. Got a can on there. Got the handguard on there from KM three solutions. And it's just been a blast. That is such a fun, crowd-pleasing gun. Um, Mike from Let's Go Hunt was there. He got to shoot it. And yeah, we just had a really good time. So if you're looking for a 9mm uh, upper that'll work with any lowers that you could possibly think of uh, that that are also 9mm lowers or magazine inserts or anything like that, the Mat 9 is one of those that you should definitely check out. 
Aaron's got a mag insert right there. He's holding it up to the camera, but audio listeners won't know that. But um, hey, audio listeners, I'm holding it up to the fucking camera. Yeah. <laughs> right. So you put that in the magazine oh. of a normal AR, and then you can put nine mil mags in that and use it with your Matt Nine Upper. There, I got a Glock mag in there right now. The magazine sex change. Yeah. So Matt Nine, uh, the Matt CCC close combat carbine uh, is their entire gun. So you can get the upper, you can get the entire gun and uh, go check it out. <laughs> I was waiting for the the drop there. Hawkeye Handloader said, I can't recommend the Matt nine. Next message enough. I can't recommend it enough. So there you go. Matadorarms.com coupon code WLS is life saves you money. Save me money. I don't want to. Mm-hmm. All right. Now, it's time to make some news, Aaron. Well, I didn't make the news. I'm just reporting it, Sean. Well, that's the name of the segment, so I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> well, first, let's start off with Maxim Defenses. Introduces their 338 MSX Suppressor, which is really weird. It's a, obviously, it's a big bore suppressor, but, okay, high pressure. So, obviously, 338 is going to have a lot of pressure, but it's also fucking made of aluminum. And they can say they say you can shoot uh, twenty rounds succinct, succinctly. Try again. Try again. Uh, 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 Does that hurt? I don't fucking know. You can shoot. You can shoot really quickly with it. Twenty rounds, uh, one per second for so twenty seconds. You can do a mag jump. Um, but <laughs> that's about it. Don't mag go too, jump. Well, mag, mag dump for a three because they they said you know when you say that you think it's like a DMR rifle, but you know really so, is. So I, I covered this on TGC News. It's coming out tomorrow evening. See, we always trump you. You know, I was actually thinking. Always before me. That's I, fine. I, you know, I was thinking this, though. Um, I'm just going to throw this out there. Is we should actually just run your 60-second news right here every week. Mm-hmm. Because, I mean, we basically cover a shit ton of the same stuff. You just do it better, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> he he does a little research and knows the word. <clears throat> that Aaron was trying to say. Uh, My favorite part about this entire article is that there's a quote, and I want you guys to take this quote to heart. It says, couldn't be more excited about this new suppressor design. And that quote is from somebody that you may probably really respect. It's from David Farrell, the vice president of commercial sales for the company that made the suppressor. (laughs) So, so it gets even better than this and, and like kind of weirder. Okay. Okay. So the article says, this is the MSX suppressor. And if you scroll down somewhere, uh, it says something about uh, PRS or, or, or no, no, no. It was, I, I remember now. So they, this article completely says MSX, MSX, MSX. However, when you go to the website, there is no category called MSX. That doesn't exist. This is a PRS can. I had to find this out. I was like, wait, what the fuck? Where is this on their website? This is a PRS can. It's aluminum because uh, they wanted it to be lighter weight. It's a 19 ounce can. MSRP is $9.95, I believe. The the 20, so 20 rounds, uh, 20 rounds in a group at one round per second. And then they want you to let it cool to ambient temperature. Meaning if you shoot more than that, you're going to roast the can. Oof. And I looked, I was like, well, that's kind of weird. PRS stages are not that, l- maybe like 15 rounds in a stage. That's why this is designed that way. However, there are other 338 cans on the market from such companies as YHM that are lighter and full auto rated and cheaper. Huh. I have no idea why there's fucking balloons. <laughs> I, I got that's a, an Apple thing. I got a 338 can. I trust more. What's that? Bowers Group versus 375. Ooh, that's fancy. That's also not a 338 can. It's a 375 can. It'll work. You're, you're a dirty liar. It'll work. <laughs> It'll so, go. Through. It will work, but you're a dirty liar. What's it's okay? So it's bigger. <laughs> It'll work. You put a 338 Lapua through that. Maxim defense. Yeah, like there's no MSX in their website. Can. Sorry, go ahead, Sean. I, I, sorry, I was just, there's no MSX cans on their website. Correct. Huh. This is a PR, PRS can. Weird. Yeah, and the whole press release says MSX. It's not on their fucking website. 
is it just like not available yet? And what was the word Aaron was trying to come up with? Like, I got so many questions. So go to uh, consecutively, consecutively. There's the word. Yes. So if you go to the PRS section, right? Okay, I'm going PRS. There we go. There's the PRS 338, and it is exactly this can. And then if you look under additional information, it says the MSX suppressor line. Oh boy, they messed this up. They, they this company. First of all, it's not the first time. Second off, what the fuck is this? Not hard. This is not hard. I think homeboy. That's what she of said. Having quotes, <laughs> the vice president of commercial sales should be actually uh, checking into their copywriting. Dude, marketing departments across the industry bitch and moan about how hard their fucking job is and then they fuck up the most basic shit to be like fair how- to be fair that guy probably told whoever does this like it's called this you got to do this you got to do this and then some fucking peon just didn't didn't do whatever what he was told to do right because but he his- is ultimately responsible and should have fucking looked yeah, it's the managing editor of the firearm blog, Matt Moss. No, 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 no. It's the, this is not the firearm blog's fault. I'm not blaming them. No, uh, that's fair. That's fair. The press release that they copy pasted here is from look, it says Maxim Defense, blah, blah, blah. That's from the company. All that shit's from the company. Yeah. My, my point being where my wife works, uh, a lot of department heads will just do things completely opposite of the other department head, like, you know, planning and sales and marketing just like all have different views on how shit could, should get done. And when some planning says you got to do this, this, and this and sales goes, but we don't want to. And they're like, yeah, but that's like what we need to do. And they're like, like we're literally planning and you guys are literally sales. Like it's our job to tell you what's coming up. And then you need to plan, you know, we're planning accordingly. And then you need guys need to get this ready for these things to sell it. And then you got to get marketing on, to bump the things for the selling. And then they're just like, well, we don't think that's the right direction. We're like too fucking bad. And then they just don't do it. Yep. Yeah. That's how the gun industry operates as well. Yeah. 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 And I, it's a thousand dollar suppressor, 338 aluminum. Like I don't have any interest in this. Do you guys? So the YHM bad Larry 338 is full auto rated 17 ounces, two ounces lighter. And it's like 70 bucks cheaper. There you go. Wow, there's a lot, of, a, lot of, a lot of Aaron AI uh, jokes going on in the comments. Go fuck yourself, guys. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. So what's old is new again. Uh, let's see. Is it, I'm waiting for the uh, thing to pop up. High speed internet and all. The uh, Chimiron. Chimiron. Cimarron. 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 I got it. I, <laughs> we fuck. I thought, you know what? For some reason, I always thought there was an H in there. So Cimarron. Walker 1847. Chimiron is what he fucking said. Chim, he said, Chim, Chimini, Chim, Chimini, Chim, Chim, Chiron. Okay. All right, maybe the people in the it fucking comments are right. I'm sorry. I had a stroke. I wish I was Sean. <laughs> so the Cimarron are, Bad song. Uh, Go ahead. are built to look like the original Walker Colts from 1847. And uh, so they're going to be cap and ball. Uh, it's going to be pretty. They actually look pretty cool. Would you, would, Sean, you do a lot of, or you were talking about doing that Western shit, cowboy shooting. Would you, would you use this? No. <laughs> no. I mean, I'm not saying that it doesn't look cool. Cause like, it looks pretty cool. Uh, it's like an old, old reproduction. I think it looks cool. I don't want it. I would shoot somebody else's if, if they had one, but yeah, I don't know. What about the rest of you guys? I'm Jeremy? not really, I, I love old cowboy shit like I really do, but I just it starts at cartridges. I really don't give a fuck about black potter cap and ball and all that. I just don't. I feel very much the same. John, I how mean, about you? I would 100% shoot this gun. I would never own it. I yeah. hate bird's head grips. Hate them. I think it's the worst thing that people keep putting on fucking revolvers. I think it's horrendous. And this gun will never get cleaned if I owned it. Not once. That's not right. really a bird's head, though. Yes, it is. Mm-mm. It's the bird's same shape. 
It's that tiny little section that comes off that's like the size of a fucking uh, a magic marker. You know, like this little itty bitty grip, and then yeah. it flares out at the bottom. But nobody's hands on the face of Mother Earth yeah, are no, shaped like that. That's no. not what it's for. Oh, what's it for? Being terrible? No, it's actually because you have to control a horse with the other hand, and that was actually made so you could roll it in your hand, cocking the hammer with one hand while you controlled your twelve hundred pound animal with the other. Like for it's the era, for again for the era. That was a pretty good design for what they had to deal with. I will not argue that. I will not. I cannot and will not argue that for the era. Yeah. The thing is, they, they people try to shove this grip onto modern revolvers, and I hate it. That's all I'm saying. I thought bird's head grips were the ones that went to a point down at the bottom. Technically, yes. Okay. I call these, it's that's that's my shitty nomenclature. Fair, fair, fair. Okay, got it. Um. Yeah, Aaron, what do you think? I dig it. Uh, it's not practical, obviously, but fucking it, it looks nice. Yeah, I mean, it looks nice. I really like Cimarron's guns. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, I have a couple. They're uh, re remakes of the Peacemaker. And well, they're, they're really just an importer. Yeah, yeah. They're all uh, Uberty. They're all Uberty. Uberty. Yeah. Soli and uh, shit like that. Mm -hmm. Same with Taylor's and Co. Yeah. I, I love my Uberti Peacemaker replicas. They're absolutely awesome. Um, yeah, I got two. Uh, let's see. I got I got a bunch of Taylors and company, not Cimarron. I have I, I got Cimarron because you know cheap. Chimera. Uh, Aaron, what you what's next? Next next up, Sean is da -da -da, lightweight rifles, expensive oh. lightweight rifles, super expensive lightweight rifles. Wilson Combat Tactical Ultra Lightweight Rifle. Yeah, here we so, go. Wilson Combat has come out with a uh, ultra light AR. Uh, it weighs less than uh, just under six pounds, like five and some five point five pounds, and it comes in at a whopping two thousand one hundred fifty dollars for the base model. Yeah, doesn't Faxon make a sub five pound gun that is like fifteen hundred bucks? Yes, they do. Or six, uh, sixteen <laughs> and some change, but yeah. MSR people, so you can definitely get it for under that. Yeah. So why, why, why? Anyone? I, I mean, Sean, you wouldn't want it. There's no, uh, there's no forward assist. Yeah. I mean, that, that, that for you, Sean? it is important to me to have a forward assist, but it's not like a deal breaker or anything. Um, yeah. I don't know. How much does this weigh? Four pounds. No, that's the trigger breaks at four pounds. Say, yeah, it, it, weighs, weigh four pounds. it weighs five point five point five. Huh. Ah. Uh. I have the Wilson Combat Ultralight Hunter. I've got one sitting behind me in three hundred hammer. Uh, they are very very lightweight. They kind of expect the accuracy to be meh on these things. They're not particularly amazing. They're not bad rifles, but. You know, it's it, this is for a Wilson combat enthusiast. That's fair. Of which I am not. So like, yeah. I mean, I like the gun and the cartridge is like 300 hammer is cool. The one I've got, but I don't know that I would pick this as like a fighting rifle. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, completely. All right. What, what else you got, Aaron? Okay, you ready, Sean? Keep trying to fucking impress us. So far, haven't haven't done it. How about Heritage Manufacturing their range side four ten? That they call a their rifle, their their lever action four ten rifle. However, I can't find anything that says that the the they're actually um, there are lands and grooves inside these barrels. If the if the if the barrels are rifled, doesn't say. Um, but they're calling them rifles, but they're shotguns, really. And they're lever action. And they look nice. Do you hmm. want one? No. But let's see. They're shotguns, but Heritage Manufacturing calls them rifles. So maybe these are slug guns. There, There is no mention on the website of anything besides. I went looking into that same issue. Uh, there's no mention of any other cartridges like 45 Colt, which is typically mentioned alongside this, which yeah. lends itself to being a smooth bore. I think, hear me out on this, I think the reason that this is called a rifle 
and not a shotgun is because this company is likely not run by Americans. These are all Turkish imports. 100% yes. Wait, aren't, so, these, aren't, these, aren't these Brazilian though? Is this is this made by the same people who makes Taurus? No, you're talking about you think of Rossi. That's Rossi. Oh, okay. These these all have Turkish walnut, and the fact that they call out Turkish walnut is a hallmark of Turkish imported guns. And that all that tells me is that these things are imported from Turkey. They could be good, they could be trash, but they're all shotguns. By all law, shotgun all the time. And the chat is saying that we got kicked off of YouTube. That is true. I have the email right here, 7.45 p.m. What Why? happened? One minute ago, violated uh, firearms policy. Wait, what, what, How? What, when? How? I, I, don't, I do not Am know. I 50, pictures, maybe? Yeah, 54 minutes, 13 seconds. Showing pictures is not against the rules. But you know what? Fuck you, YouTube. Fuck you. Uh, Rumble. Or Twitter. That's the places. Or just download the podcast like a fucking normal person. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> All right. But yeah, I, I, I agree with John. They're probably just not American. They okay. say they're right. in Cambridge, Georgia, which I believe is actually where Taurus is. Oh, damn. Which I don't know. It's, it's fucky, but yeah, go ahead. Well, this one was the next and final story was really for Nick, but he's not fucking here. Uh, <laughs> Walter reintroduces the 32 AP, ACP, PPK, and PPKS models. I know Nick would just fucking go gaga over that shit, but honestly, that shit comes at a threaded barrel. I'm buying one. Oh, well, look at Jeremy's in. Couldn't you just don't you don't think there's any threaded barrels out there you can just drop in? I mean, I don't know. In theory. A 32 ACP barrel? I don't know. Get one of those clampons. <laughs> yeah, that, that is an interesting man. I don't. I don't have any Walthers. I don't think that I have one Walther gun. PDP's so, a nice gun. Yeah, people tell me that they're great. I just don't have any. That Q5 metal frame. Yeah, but it's like fucking expensive. I'm not saying it. Oh, like we care about that. How many fucking guns you have that are over $1,000? Like, shut three. up. He's got <laughs> okay, okay, Sean, I want you to look at the pictures. Go up to the top model. Okay. Oh. Here we are. It's going to scroll all the way up to the top. Look at the picture. Okay. Yeah. All right. See that guy's hand? Yeah. Okay. Now scroll down. You'll see that guy's hand again going into a purse. Scroll oh, down. boy. Uh, that's a different hand. No, that's totally his hand. Uh, maybe you just put <laughs> nail polish on. Because that is, I mean, they both are super fat, chubby little hands. I mean, look at that. Hey, the top hand's they're not. Fat. They're not fat hands. That bottom one is. That's a normal hand. Okay, that's a human hand. Yeah, that that bottom one. She's definitely five foot tall. About <laughs> I can't Thank hold you. this whopper. <laughs> she's I definitely don't... putting that in her bag so that she can eat nachos. <laughs> Yo, I would, I would totally First have nachos. I would totally, much. I would totally have James Bond's gun. I, I mean, so that's the thing. Does anyone actually want this for any other reason than like nostalgia? Nope. I, like I said, if it was a 32 threaded barrel that I could suppress with like uh, some of the really small, like a uh, um, mod 9K or a uh, cash nine, uh, like some really stupid, small, no booster uh, can like, yeah, that just for shits and giggles. Yeah, for sure. Like we had one of those uh, Beretta Beretta 32 flip barrel. Mm hmm. Which one's that, John? This is the JK Armament. Uh, yeah, there you go. That's the Mod 9K. He's looking. JK 105 CCX. Oh, no, I'm thinking that that's CGS. CGS Mod 9K. Yeah. yeah. I mean, this thing is ridiculously yeah. tiny. So one of those Berettas with the flip barrel with something like that on it are just stupid fun to play with. Yeah. Like, it's just a good... It's like... It's like shooting beer cans off a fence post. Like so what, a good time. What about the PPK and 32 ACP for a thousand bucks? That's a little high. Yep. Yeah. That's, that, that's, that's holy shit. That's what they're going for. So well, that's MSRP. Yeah. Uh, 969 MSRP, just to be a hundred percent clear. I shot the SIG version of this gun. 
I think it was the 232. No idea if they still make it. Basically the same fucking gun. Uh, I got really, really bad slide bite. Mm. Ouch. Really bad slide bite from this thing. And uh, I think it's hilarious <laughs> that they're bringing back the 32 ACP to appease people. Like the original James Bond gun was a 32 ACP, right? Right. Yeah. They stopped making it at some point, likely because it didn't fucking sell. And now they're bringing it back for some reason uh, to they, not sell again. They right. are they are listed on uh, RSR uh, as coming soon. Uh, retail map of eight ninety nine, nine hundred bucks. It's too much, man. For a toy, dealer cost is a bit less than that, but like yeah. thirty two ACP by comparison to other cartridges is not good. Right. I call it 32 pillow fight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That's fucking great. Agreed. It's not good. Nah, I don't, I don't really want it, uh, which is, I do want one of the like Berettas. I, I want one of those real bad. I have one in 22. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. Sean's favorite in caliber is 22. No, it is. I hate. I, I keep one of those tilt. I keep one of those tip barrel 32s around. Oh, hold on. Since we're not on YouTube, uh, <laughs> Join us on Rumble. <laughs> Should we shill for Rumble now? See if we can get a deal. No, we shouldn't shill for that pile of trash. This is what Jeremy wants. Yeah, yeah. That, that's what I want. Yeah, but in 32. Bowers Group Biddy, 22. Oh, no, this, I don't want 22. This is the shit. I want 25 or 32. That's fucking stupid. Agreed. Speaking of Bowers Group. <laughs> He's got that bitty there. Jeremy got that 375. Hold him up. Hold him up loud and proud. Fuck you, YouTube. I, I think Jeremy holding his can up like that was what did it, but who gives a fuck? So we got Jeremy's verse 375 there. We got John Patton's bitty. Uh, it is a tale of two worlds right there. Aaron's eating. Yeah, you're 20. I, I got a 22 too. This is also a 22. Don't make me get the 50 off the wall. Hey, I, I'm saying this is a 22 caliber as well. What is now, that? Now, Jeremy. What? Oh, go ahead. Tell him what it is. It's a 22. Yeah. yeah. What is it? A 22 250? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fucking mm, <laughs> fud. What? Well, I got a 22 250. It's a great. It's a great cartridge. Oh, it's, it's a, a great deer hunting round. Savage no. impulse I'm 22 not, 250 straight pull. I shoot fucking varmints with a 22 250. You're a fucking savage. Earlier before the show, I was like, Jesus, no, the, that's an expensive way to shoot varmints. The rifle's a savage impulse. Uh -huh. <laughs> Why did you buy that? What? Why? He, I don't know. I just kind of thought it was cool. All right, that's fair. And I, and I and I needed to replace my 80-year-old Savage 99 lever action. So, Jeremy, why did you go with the Bowers Verse 375? Uh, actually, I straight up asked Tom what he would put on a 22250 and this is what he recommended because he said any standard 30 caliber uh rifle can you're going to run the risk of just burning out your blast chamber uh for the simple fact that you know the lighter weight bullets on this thing are going 4200 feet per second mm -hmm. so uh, even the 55 grainers that I shoot are like 3700 um it's oh my just God. Yeah. that's so fast Right. Um, 600 feet per second faster than a 556, and that's not really even pushing it with that's just commercial ammo. Yeah. <laughs> you start getting like the 35 grain bullets, and they're like 41 and some change. Oof. And John Patton looks like he has a verse 50 there. This is one of the first suppressors I ever got. Paid for this with my own money. It is a verse 50 on a 500 Magnum single shot. <laughs> that's so ridiculous it i love it back this was a 20 inch barrel i had it chopped back to 16 how does that sound with the the can on there um it's still loud let's be fair it's 500 back. <laughs> still pretty loud. uh i smoke checked a hog with this and uh it was pretty you should, rad you should uh, cut that thing back to the fucking stock uh that would make it illegal no that would make it an sbr and you know how to do the paperwork i don't want to do the paperwork put a brace on it I it's, hate you it's so it's hard. Kind of stock. <laughs> uh, You're allowed to turn a rifle into a pistol. I don't no, want to. No, 
Well, I could. I could remanufacture it. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of don't want to either. But that that is dope. So there we have the the biddy. We got the verse three seventy five. We got the verse fifty. All on things that are notoriously well, not the twenty two, but other I, things. I, I love to say I did not pay for this. Uh, all all disclosure. Uh, Tom sent this to me because I am his friend, and I sell a lot of his cans. So yeah, he, he was just like, "You can have this, dude." For the money, those cans are so good. Like dude, they're they're not like fancy looking on the outside, but they right. they fuck. The only time I pretty much don't recommend one of Tom's cans is if somebody's like, "I want to do mag dumps," and I'm like, "Yeah, you don't want this, right?" Uh, like because exactly. they're not they're just not made for that but like oh i got a uh you know i'm a prs shooter oh i want to hunt with i got a dreadnought on my 4570 government i have a asp 45 on my 45 long colt lever action i have a, a icon and a biddy that basically live on a couple of machine uh, 22 machine guns which are fucking sweet um <laughs> yeah I got an open bolt 1022 and I got a full auto Tipman <laughs> and, and yeah, one has a, uh, the old, the, the predecessor to the, the icon, the USS 22. Yeah. Um, and he said the only difference is one has a titanium, uh, tube. Uh, the icons titanium has a titanium tube. So it's a little lighter. And then the biddy lives on a open bolt 1022 and they're fucking just tits. The, uh, uh Griffin uh, bushwhacker sucks on a fucking 4570. It sucks. Sucks. All those hybrid. So here's the problem. The hybrid 46, the Bushwhacker 46, the fucking uh, any of those like, oh, they'll run pistols and rifles. Do, 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 do. The problem is they have to make the can small enough to function on a booster on a handgun. So they're not big enough. They don't have enough volume for actual. Yeah, they might be. They took a pistol can and they welded the fucking seams so it'll take the rifle pressures. Congratulations. You still have a handgun suppressor sitting on top of your fucking rifle. And it's not goddamn big enough to be fucking hearing safe or good. I will put your... I, I don't give a shit. I'll put my dreadnought up against a fucking Bushwhacker 46 and I've done that before. And everybody that has bought that Bushwhacker went, fuck. <laughs> right. I was shooting the USS uh, on my 17 HMR, taking uh, prairie dogs over the weekend. Just, yeah. No hearing pro. It just so good. So good. Bowersgroup.com, coupon code WLS. Saves you money. All the money. Yeah. I, I couldn't remember if there was a number after it briefly. All right. That's going to wrap it up for this show. But we do another one. We'll see if we get kicked off YouTube for that one. For all the people that watch live, just go to WLSlive.com and uh, that's that'll take you directly to our Rumble page. Join Gun Owners of America and go to their goals uh, event this year. It is uh, going to be in Knoxville, I believe. It's August 17th and 18th. And uh, that will be, let's see, gunowners.org slash WLS will take you there. You have to be a member of gun owners of America to get into the uh, event for free. Uh, and that link right there will save you money. Tell your friends about the podcast. Don't forget to join the posse suicide prevention line is going to be 1-800-273-8255. And I uh, always prefer dangerous freedom over peaceful slavery. We'll see you in the other show momentarily. What's the name of the show, Sean? I forgot to 